Hello and good morning, CTS 265, Section 840 students for the Fall 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This morning's video tutorial is going to be on our Cisco Learning Labs access. Uh, and as you can see, I'm actually logged in at the main page here. And we're going to be doing activity number one, which is our RIP in G activity. So uh, when you get logged into the main uh, page here, you're going to go ahead, go ahead and click on Select. Uh, once you've clicked on select, you're going to want to go ahead and take a look. You can see here we've got about 25 discovery, 26 discovery activities, and then we have 12 challenge activities. Uh, if you take a look over to the right, you can see your credits available. So everybody is going to start with 3,000 minutes. Uh, and remember uh, to make sure that you log yourself off when you complete an activity and when you're done working inside of Learning Labs, uh, or else that countdown timers we'll see here uh, will continue to go uh, and we've had a couple students over the years uh, that have left themselves logged in accidentally uh, and it basically uses all of their time so make sure uh, that you're aware of that so let's go ahead let's start the lab or discovery activity one configuring rip ng and so we're going to kind of walk through this uh, as well and so we click on begin lab now one of the first things you're going to want to do uh, and uh, this question came up early on. If you go to Help and Settings, uh, you can say Switch to Web Telnet. Uh, and what this is going to do, it's going to, uh, there'll be a refresh here of the window. And what will happen is, and there it goes, you'll start to, uh, you'll use the Web Telnet program here in the browser uh, as opposed to having to have something installed uh, on your operating system. And so you can see here we have uh, Router 1 and Router 2. We've got our introduction. So if I click on the introduction, you can see we've got uh, a basic synopsis of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be configuring uh, RIPNG. Uh, it looks like we're going to be sharing a default route here off of Router 1 uh, to Router 2. So that default information originate. And so that's sort of the introduction. Uh, if you look at the procedure, uh, this is actually going to sort of walk you through everything that you would need to do. And so you see here, step one, access R2, enable IPv6 unicast routing, and then we're going to call the process uh, CCMP underscore RIP. And let's see on uh, which interface do they want this assigned. It looks like Ethernet 01 in the loopback address. Let's confirm that. Yeah, so on Ethernet 01 and then the loopback address. So let's go ahead, uh, let's dive in here, and we'll simply uh, click on the router. You can see it's going to open the, the router tab, and so then we are logged in here in user exec. Uh, we can go to privilege exec. We'll type in global config and say IPv6 unicast routing, and so that's going to enable IPv6 unicast routing. And the next thing we're going to do uh, is enable that RIP NG process. Now remember, uh, we actually don't have to say uh, IPv6 router RIP and then give the name of the process. What we can do is we can go directly into the interfaces and uh, let me pull that procedure back here to make sure uh, Ethernet 01 and loopback 0. So if I were to go into Ethernet 01, let me click back in there, uh, Ethernet 01 and say IPv6 RIP and then the name of the process. So again, this is going to be creating it for us. So we'll say CCMP, I believe, underscore RIP, and that's what we'll go with, and then enable. Now what that'll do is if I say do show run, you'll notice that it actually creates the the RIP NG global process uh, right here, IPv6 router RIP CCMP underscore RIP. So not only did we enable it under the interface, and let me go back up here, Ethernet 01, you can see that enabling it there, that the iOS is smart enough to say, oh, well, if he's enabling it here, he has to give us the name of the RIP process, so we'll go ahead and save him a step, and we're simply going to create that global process for him. And so that's what it did on Ethernet 01. If I go to interface loopback 0, and we can simply recall that command, so now we actually have RIP and G enabled on those two interfaces. All right, so let's go back to the procedure here. And 
we've got that taken care of there. Uh, we don't need to do the show IP interface brief or IPv6 interface brief. We did the enablement there. We're probably going to do, yeah, there it is. So they want us to do now a validation here. So how do we validate what, oops, sorry, what interfaces that the process is running on? Well, do show IPv6 protocols. And you can see here that the interfaces are loopback zero and Ethernet zero one. So we do have the RIP process enabled. So everything looks good from that perspective. Uh, let's go ahead and come back to where we were. Uh, it looks like maybe on router one, it is already do show, sorry about that. So say do show IPv6 uh, route RIP. Aha, so yeah, the RIP process, it appears, uh, we're learning this information over that Ethernet 01 interface, so it looks like router 1 uh, is already configured. And definitely take note that the link local address uh, is the address that's being used for the next hop. And remember when we looked at the RFC 2080 and we looked at the special RTE entry, uh, remember that it had commented in there that it, it's going to be a link local address that is going to be used for the next hop address. All right, so we'll come back up to our procedure. And let me scroll back down. It keeps putting me back at the very top. Uh, we looked at the routing table. There's the two routes that we see. And so now uh, the metric for RIPNG is two. And remember, it's because the router counts itself in the calculation. Um, and let's see what we're being asked to. OK, so router one says, hey, I've got a default that points to the internet. So I am going to use RIPNG to tell R2 about it. Because right now, R2 only knows these, has only learned these two routes down here via RIPNG. So R2 doesn't have a default. So if R2 isn't going exactly uh, to uh, the location or the prefix that it's trying to get to, uh, the packet's going to be uh, dropped. So it has to have a specific match or else there's no default. So we're going to add the default in. Uh, and it looks like they want us to do the originate here. Yeah, information originate. We're not going to do originate only, uh, but it looks like we're going to do the originate, and is that it? And then they want us to do default information only. So we'll do both, and there'll be some time in between. So we'll come back to the diagram. I'll click on router one. You can see here we're in user exec. We're now we're in privilege exec, get into global config. Uh, do show run. Sorry, do show run. Let's make sure. And where is that process name after the interfaces? Uh, so again, it's CCMP underscore RIP here as well. So uh, let's get into interface. And you can see there is the static IPv6 default route. So let me make sure Ethernet 03, loopback 1, and loopback 0. So it's got to be Ethernet 03. So let's go ahead and get into Ethernet 03. Uh, do show run, and is this going to show me? I'm hoping that this is going to show me. There we go. So we're going to say IPv6 rip CCMP underscore rip. Um, and then you can see here we've got these options we can enable, so forth and so on. And we're basically saying default information originate. So not default information originate only, but default information originate. So we come back over here to router 2, and let's say show IPv6 route. And you can see, actually, rather quickly, we've picked up the default route. So now, irrespective of where I'm going, if I don't have a longer, more specific match for the prefix I'm trying to reach in my routing table, uh, the RIP process is going to assist me here. And I'm going to take the default route, which is going to be over to router 1. And that's not a bad thing, because if you look here, uh, router 2 does not have options as to how to get out of the environment. Basically, router 2 has a single path uh, out of the environment in order to get out of the environment. So having a default come in from router 1 is actually a good thing, uh, because that is the only path out for router 2 to get out to the internet. All right, so now we're going to come back over here. Uh, and we're going to say default information originate. If I do a question mark, I'm sorry about that. Let me get back. Default information uh, only. I can go ahead and change it. So if we say do show run interface Ethernet 03, you can see we've got the default information only. Now remember, with default information only, we are only going to get 
the default route. And as you can see here, it may take us a couple seconds, but what we're going to see is, oops, sorry, it did put us at the beginning there. So what we're going to see is only the default route. And that's what that default only means. And again, in this scenario, uh, this is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, um, since there really is no other route for R2, or no other path, I should say, for R2 to get to the internet, uh, R2 has to go through R1. Uh, this actually makes sense. Just give R2 a default route, and all of their traffic will transit over to Router 1. And then Router 1 has the responsibility of making sure that that traffic uh, makes it to where it's supposed to go. And again, R1 has a default route, static default, out to the internet. So hopefully all my talking there has given us the time to come back, and it doesn't look like it has cleared yet. Uh, and again, it's probably because we're waiting for the uh, the keep alive, and then we may end up waiting for the trash dive. So let's do this. Let's say clear IPv6, uh, rip, and ccnp underscore rip. And so this is also going to have an effect where we're going to lose the routing, because we're clearing the process right now. So what's happening is you have that the initial exchange uh, messages are probably being sent back and forth uh, where router 2 is probably requesting the full uh, routing table from router 1 which is only going to be uh, that default route and sure enough there it is alright now the most important thing now that we've got the activity is done uh, and we've walked through things as you'll notice up here on the right I have this countdown timer I've got 49 hours 49 minutes and 35 seconds as it continues to count down so if I were to get up and walk away right now this countdown timer is going to continue to count down uh, and it could chew up all of your minutes so make sure that you click on exit and we'll let it refresh and then you can see you'll be given a balance it'll show you the total credits available total time used and total time remaining for the semester and so you can see the status is suspended because we've stopped doing the lab and that is lab number or I should say discovery activity number one uh, in Cisco learning lab so again we looked at rip ng we looked at the default information originate we looked at the default information only we talked about when you would use it if a router only has a single path out of uh, off their segment right and out to the internet uh, then it makes sense for router 1 to simply throw a default route to router 2. If you wanted to make sure that traffic from router 2, if it doesn't know where it's going, uh, is dropped, then you would simply not uh, originate that default route, and you would force traffic that uh, is transiting router 2 to actually uh, make a match in the routing table in order to make it to its destination. And then we talked about the minutes, right? We could see how many minutes you've got left, uh, how many minutes you've used, and the total that you started with and the importance of making sure that you don't leave the lab activity up uh, because it will continue to run so if I were to click on account home uh, I could come here and then simply say exit lab system and that brings me back to uh, a very small login screen so I'll make that a little larger there all right well this is gonna wrap up uh, the intro tutorial for the discovery activity one on RIPNG as well as sort of a soft landing into how to use the Cisco learning lab system all right thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you uh, in class in two weeks no class on Monday night we'll see you on the 12th have a great weekend